good football awareness about him and he learns well. So once I got a sense of, of the fact that he'd be able to pick things up fast enough to contribute, it was kind of a no-brainer um, that he'd be part of the group. Seems, speaking of playing nasty, seemed like Tyrone had a pretty good week last week blocking. Is he becoming that kind of a mauler out there at that position? Yeah, certainly. He's definitely uh, uh, been improving every week. He's been better than the previous and uh, looking for that to, to continue. Devin said you had a big role in his recruitment in getting him here. I know that for him it was kind of a lot of last-minute stuff and a lot of getting hot late in his recruitment to pick him up. So can you just kind of touch on what it was like to build that relationship with him? Uh, shoot, it was just kind of steady. I mean, he's the kind of guy who could have gone wherever he wanted to go, and it was just kind of always being there and, and building that relationship over a long period of time. Um, I think he might have been the first guy I offered when I got the job here. Uh, last January or February, whatever it was. So, um, always loved him, and, and uh, it was just it was a, it was a long time, and, and uh, I, luckily it, it paid off at the end. Was he always your top tight end target from the very beginning? Uh, yeah, I mean he's 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 special, and we're looking for different types of guys. Obviously, Nick is a different type of guy than him, so right. you want different types of tight ends. But uh, in terms of the category that he falls in, there's there's no doubt that he's he was the top guy. Is uh, Gentry still with you guys? Is he doing receiver stuff, or is he still with you? A little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, I've said this before. It's kind of it's probably not as big of a of a difference as as it would seem from the outside because a second tight end, the position that Jake Butt plays, it's oftentimes really it's a receiver position. But it's just doing it with the tight end. So there's flexibility there, personnel wise, where the second tight end is really playing a receiver spot. So um, I would say it's not like he's. Not a tight end, or he's just a receiver, but he's kind of doing both. Is he still carrying over? You know, he made progress in the spring. Did he carry that over into the fall, or is there still some things to adjust to with that new position to him? Uh, I mean, there's carryover. I think there's always stuff to adjust to as well. I mean, no one's arrived in terms of just being good enough that they don't need to mm -hmm. keep getting better. So um, I think spring certainly helped him though. I'm kind of confused as to what the question is. No, I mean, is he is he still adjusting to tight end? I mean, you said he's playing a little bit of both. Oh, the yeah. Blocking part, the he's adjusting part. to both. I mean, these guys went from quarterback, so yeah. uh, I think still in the process of developing as a as a perimeter player rather than being at the quarterback spot. But um, I think last few weeks we've seen him make plays in practice that are that are uh, exceptional, and and uh, I think we'll start seeing those on Saturdays uh, this season. Do you and Chris split up the special teams units, kind of overseeing things, or how did you work sharing some of those responsibilities? Uh, it's all together for the most part. There's certain phases where one person kind of takes the lead, but uh, it's really all together. We're uh, with Coach Zordich as well, and, and uh, we all work really well together, so it's a good good group. Jay, uh, speaking with Jim on the conference call, you mentioned that this week, you know, special and given the field goal problems last week, that special teams would be kind of an emphasis. What what has been emphasized, or what will you guys continue to emphasize uh, going into Saturday? Um, in terms of field goal? Well, well and I guess technique, because I remember him saying, like, the laces 12 to 6, you yeah. know, specifically, so the kicking game was kind of off. I mean, all the, was the was the kicking game the only thing where, you know, kind of didn't go as planned, or are there other areas that you guys are emphasizing? Um, always emphasizing everything. I mean, the kicking game, field goal in particular, there are certain things with the operation that, that just need to always be perfect. Um, and the kicker's got to kick well. And, and uh, the nature of that position is sometimes you just don't have the best day like other positions. And, and uh, uh, Kenny approached this week the same way he always has. And maybe we worked on a few things uh, that he struggled with um, more so. But it's nothing, nothing drastically different, no. Just... Same way as offensive defense. I mean, you find things that you you have struggled with, and maybe you get an extra few reps on that specific thing, or watch the tape extra close. But uh, nothing too different. So it wasn't any, mechanically everything's there. You just kind of chalk it up to it was not your day, your, not your guys's day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there's certain specific reps where a snap could have been a little bit better. Uh, our holder is tremendous, so he can typically make up for uh, a snap that isn't perfect. And then Kenny's got to kick the way he's capable of kicking, and we have no doubt that he'll do that moving forward. How did you guys discover that Garrett was such a good holder? I hadn't heard anything about him holding until pretty much this year. Uh, he has tremendous hands, which you wouldn't really know except for the fact that he played scout team receiver quite a bit. Um, and he actually had played some receiver with our with our uh, like our like ones at one point in the spring when we were down on numbers. So um, he has really, really good hands. 
that kind of made him a no-brainer. You want a really sure-handed guy, and, and a guy who can devote a lot of time to it. And since he was kind of the fourth quarterback or wherever he is, he's able to spend a lot of time on that particular craft. Why is that such a unique skill that you couldn't just have Mar Darbo go and do that? He's got pretty good hands, too. Well, the you certainly could. The problem is to get it really, really, really um, polished and consistent, you want somebody that can spend a lot of time with the kicker. And so part of the problem of having a quarterback or backup quarterback or, or um, Darbo doing it is he can't spend an hour of practice with Kenny. So that's that's kind of the – that's why – I mean, a lot of teams do it the same way. It's, a, it's typically – it's a guy who uh, maybe doesn't have a tremendous role in any other spot on the field because they need that practice time to get live reps with the snapper and with the kicker. Jordan almost got killed by the chubby kicker. Uh, did you have a conversation with Jabril about that? Uh, yeah, we talked about it. There's a uh, would have liked to see something different occur than that. Uh, obviously, for, for Jordan's well-being, that guy's uh, surprisingly a very good cover guy. That's not a uh, uh, that's not a new thing for him. I mean, he yeah. he's very comfortable filling holes on the kickoff team, and and uh, there was a huge one. And, and if we could have got around him, it might have been a touchdown. So, uh, but credit to him, man. He's a good. Uh, big stout cover guy in there who you, you really have to account for, which uh, is unfortunate. You usually like to be able to ignore the kickers. Jabril felt pretty bad about it. Uh, I don't know if he, it, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he did. He, he was in a little bit of self Better him than me. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I don't know if I, I might have made the same decision, but we looked at it and uh, uh, obviously you hate leaving big plays out there on the yeah. field, and that I think could have been a big one, at least would have gone out another 15 yards or so, I think possibly more. So just special teams as a whole, you you look at little things like that when you watch the game on Sunday, and it's like, God, if we could have just done this little thing differently or that little thing, maybe you're talking about a return that got to the 30 or the 35, and you're talking about a getting a 50 or a touchdown. So got to find ways to, to not leave big plays on the field. Because Jordan proved at the end of last year he can handle punts too. You know, he can, he can be an explosive guy. Is there some thought to rotating them through so Jabril doesn't have the total load on him all the time, or is that Jabril so good it's tough to move? Yeah, he's really good at everything. Uh, there's not really a great reason to, to take him out, and that's kind of one of his trademarks is that he's just – it's like he never gets tired. You can keep playing him. So um, there's merit to both of them being on the field at the same time, certainly, and making people uh, decide who they want to give the ball to. I think both are equally dangerous, so uh, that's something that, that we could look into. But um, Being both on punts, you're saying? Yeah. Oh. It could, it could happen. Some teams, some teams like we'll play later in the year, spray the ball all around, and you don't know where it's going. So that could happen, and and uh, and they're both in on kick return, as as you saw uh, in that play against Penn State. So they're both excellent. And it's a good problem to have trying to decide who should be uh, who should be returning. Did you work with Chase Winovich at all last year when he was bounced around? Yeah, I was his coach for spring ball, uh, and then he moved back to defense. Um, sometime after spring ball. So. He described himself to us as the player most like your father on the entire team. I was wondering if you saw those similarities or where that comes from. Uh, I could see the comparison for sure. I mean, Chase's biggest strength is he, you could make an argument that he cares the most um, of anyone on the team. And there's a great quote by uh, the UNC soccer coach, women's soccer coach, Anson Dorrance, who said, never underestimate the power of being the one who cares the most. I always thought that applied perfectly to Chase because it's just like he goes hard all the time, workouts, drills, practice. If something's not right, he'll come in and, and watch reps of it and try to fix it. You know, he's always uh, always positive. Anything goes wrong, he just puts a positive spin on it and moves on. So um, I think he's solution-oriented. He has a high motor, and he, and he's, and he loves football. So I, I would say it's a fair comparison. I don't know if, it's, if he's the most... Uh, most like him, but it's definitely a, definitely a good comparison. Surprise you that teams keep punting and kicking to Jabril? Uh, not really, because the alternatives aren't great. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at, uh, not to compare him, but like guys like Devin Hester, for instance, when he was had, had his heyday in Dante Hall in the NFL, the alternative is to just punt it out of bounds, so that's not a super enticing. Um, and you're not sending the great message to your team saying, hey, you guys aren't capable of tackling this guy. So I think I think it's typical in football. You don't see many guys that are altogether avoided. Um, so it's it uh, doesn't shock me, no. Is there anything else to say?
Thanks, Jay.